USC 48, UCLA 45. Let's talk about this one right quick. Uh, this was a salty, salty contest. Uh, Caleb Williams in this ball game was just, he was fired up. And trying to get stops in this game almost seemed impossible, right? It just, it felt felt very strange. Um, let's go on and pull up. Uh, here, we'll just do the box score right quick. You can see that on the screen as I'm trying to roll through here. Um UCLA finally got a stop with just over two minutes left, but Corey Foreman, of course, everybody remembers him, former number one overall uh, recruit at 247 that was, uh, he was supposed to go to Clemson. He was committed there, and then he chose not to go to Clemson and instead stayed home at USC. This was during all the pandemic stuff, right? He picked off a pass. This is a defensive lineman that picked off a pass, and he's, you know, edge rusher, whatever, but not normally known for intercepting the ball, and here you go. Uh, he picked off DTR. Dorian Thompson Robinson, there was a lot of emotion from both sides in this ball. A lot of talk, just back and forth. Caleb Williams had a lot to say at UCLA defenders after DTR's third interception. Like, once the game was pretty much wrapped up, then he started really getting after it, and he did the whole head movements, and yeah, boy, you know, all this kind of mess, and I, I was, whatever. I get where he's coming from, I understand it, but that, that part was for the birds for me. Uh, UCLA had four turnovers. They were all killer. You can't turn the ball over there. You scored 45 points, and you had four turnovers. Imagine how many points you'd have put on the board if you didn't turn the balls over. Um, things really started out great for UCLA in this. They got out to a 21-10 to lead. USC... In their first three drives, they turned the ball over on downs, they missed a field goal on the second drive, and then they threw an interception on the third drive. I mean, UCLA was not able to fully take advantage of any of it. Like, they did get out to a 21-10 to lead, uh, but you see how this game ended. I mean, it's 48-45. to Like, this was, uh, this was not what I expected from UCLA. I mean, they have not, they haven't exactly been turnover prone this year, um, but there's just something about USC and being able to uh, get turnover, right? Like, it's it's really shocking to me that, I mean, they're still number one in turnover. Uh, they have the most takeaways in the country, and they have the least giveaways. I think they've only turned the ball over like four times. I mean, it, it's it's stupid. None of this is sustainable. Uh, <laughs> Scott, he said, of course, I had USC uh, minus half a point in the first half. Uh, yeah, 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 you missed that one. Um, and a lot of that has to do with those first three drives. You know, turnover on downs, an interception, a missed field goal, like all these different... This game was almost impossible to try and handicap because you can't predict turnover. But I guess USC is making it where maybe you can. Uh, it's just nuts. I I think the Pac-12 wanted this. Like, they are... They stand to make more money if USC makes it into the playoff. And USC did secure their spot in the Pac-12 title game, but now they got to go beat Notre Dame, right? And it's going to be at the Coliseum, and we'll see what happens. This should be a fun, fun weekend of ball game. But you got to get past that one and then you got to beat either Oregon or I mean there's there's a number of different right Washington could still get in if Oregon State beats Oregon like, there's a there's a lot of different ways it happen thanks for listening to winning cures everything make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app and make sure to leave a nice five star review you can follow Gary on Twitter at Gary WCE and the show is at winning cures be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show